Hey there, everybody. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Absolutely beautiful day out here in North Texas. The sun is shining. It is just, it feels like spring. I can't believe that it's winter. I can't believe that we are in December, that we are at the end of 2020. <laughs> Hallelujah on it, right? But seriously, I just can't believe that it's December and it's just gorgeous. Like, look at this. I'm like, I'm in short sleeve shirts. I just got some lightweight jeans on and a short sleeve shirt. I could be out here in like little booty shorts and be perfectly comfortable. A tank top and booty shorts is like balmy, amazing beach weather today, at least where I'm at in Texas. Absolutely gorgeous. But this is not the weather report. It's just the start of something, right? Like just trying to get, get going. I was sitting here and I was thinking about different stuff and, you know, kind of like the topics. And I tell you right now in my life, in my world, what's going through my mind, I have probably a good hundred different directions that I could take this, this live stream that and things that I could talk about because I am just this bubbly, just cauldron full of stuff going on. But when it all comes down to it, all comes down to it and I'm looking at different things it all comes back to a primary focus and that is that is decision time in our world it is I mean look at what is going on in our world right I, I think 2020 has definitely been a massive transformation push year for a lot of us now for the world in in general you know world communities governments you know, countries, it's just our own little communities and our houses. There's so much going on. Like we really are unveiling everything that we don't want and really being given the opportunity to look at the things that we do desire, that we do want. What is the direction, the course of our lives, of our world that we want to take this in? And I think that that is the lesson that most of us needs to receive an appreciation for the life that we have and what direction do we want to take it? Really, what direction we want to take it? You know, and we all get into this victim mode sometimes of, oh, it's so and so's fault. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. It's you know, like all these different reasons and excuses as to why our individual lives are the way they are. Why we're not happy. Why we're not successful. Why our bodies aren't the way we want our bodies to be. Why our finances are not the way our finances what we want our finances to be. Why we have so much debt or not. You know, why, 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 why? Why do we not have the lover in our bed? Why? Why are we unhappy in the relationship that we're in? Why do we have all these things that we just don't want? And we look at it and we go, well, that's just part of life is just to deal with the things that come at us and the situations that we are in. And you know, once this is the job that I have, this is the relationship that I have, this is the body that I have. And yeah, I don't like it, but what am I going to do about it? And we just lift up our hands and we have tons of opinion, but at the same time, we don't know what to do with it. So we feel helpless. And then when somebody else comes along and says, Hey, Hey, you should do this. Or I don't like the way you're doing that. We stop and we question ourselves and we go, well, maybe that person's right. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should make this change. Maybe I should make this shift. Maybe maybe they're right about this or that. And it's everything from the little itty bitty details of our life, you know, from like maybe it's something like a, something in the house that, you know, somebody else says, I really don't like the way that picture is hanging on the wall. And then we take the picture off the wall because somebody else didn't like the picture on our wall. But then we go, oh, maybe, maybe maybe that shouldn't be there. Maybe that's not a good picture for right there. Or they make some little judgmental statement that just has a sh shift little things in our life, but we do it with the big things too. It might take a little bit more eating away, eroding of other people's thoughts and opinions to get to us. But in time it does get to us and it makes us make potentially humongous shifts in our life based on the other people's thoughts, opinions, ideas as to what they think we should do for our happiness. You know, I was extremely close with my mother growing up. Um, we were like this. We were so like this. I was my mommy's little girl and I was my dad's little girl for a big time too. 
but I was my mommy's little girl and you know we would take walks together and she would tell me all the intricacies of her life her frustrations her this her that I was definitely her sounding board it was a position that a small child should never be in with their parents but I was in that position and I listened to all of her anger and pain for many many years to the point that it shifted my viewpoint my opinion on my father and I went from being a loving coming home and playing games with my dad we, just, hey, we would play fetch and catch and and all this different stuff in the backyard baseball I love to come home and just play a little bit of softball I love to go fishing with my dad you know on the weekends and everything he did math with me and science with me and those were some of the sweetest best moments because he was a really quiet guy he didn't have a whole lot to say when he did say something he was you know painting me a picture he was sharing with different stuff you know but it was never intense I learned from my father the power of stillness the power of silence the power of going inward I also learned from my father a very edgy you know energy and and being passionate and I learned about rage and anger from him in an outward expression and how to blow up like a proper volcano so I learned good and bad from my dad but the sweet stuff the good stuff that I loved about my relationship with my father which was the going fishing which was the sitting and dreaming about different things and the stories that he would tell me, which was doing my math and science with my daddy, you know, which was hiking and camping and, and doing those kinds of things, learning about the great outdoors, playing outside while he was doing work, the smell of sawdust because he did, you know, he was in construction, those little moments I absolutely loved. And my mother managed to steal them from me. Now she didn't do it deliberately. That's the thing. She did not do it deliberately. She actually just went along and, you know, was just sharing her heart, her pain with me, talking about different things and was painting this evil picture of my dad to me. And over the course of time, I started to buy her bullshit. I started to buy her pain as my reality of my father and it took me many many years by the time I got to my teenage years I had a tremendous distance with my dad and it was it was heart just pulling my heart out from me because I did love that time with him and I didn't realize in my teen years and even into my early 20s that my mother had actually severed that relationship by the statements that she had made and by me not holding to being seeing my father for the relationship that I had with him. So I severed the relationship with my dad pretty hardcore in my teen years. My parents broke up, they got divorced. I stayed with my mom because after all, my dad was this bad dude and he wasn't respecting and appreciating my mom and my mom was innocent and the victim to the situation, right? And I didn't see her crazy stuff and I didn't see her manipulative stuff and I didn't see all of the stuff going on there because I was so caught up in it that I couldn't see it. But what ended up happening was I hit my 20s and I was married and I was with kids and I was living in Seattle and I started to have a life of my own and I left my mom in California and I broke free, right? I broke free from that. And I landed up there and I started living my own life and I started getting my own opinion. I started going through some big girl shit on my own and I started to my opinions and my views of life, of relationship started to change and I started to understand things more. But I didn't reach out to my dad. My mom, my mom was like, oh, you need me. And she followed me happily up to Seattle and she was there to be grandma and to be mom and to help me. And she just clung to me like this. She moved into the same apartment building that I was in. She managed to do everything possible with me. She, she made sure that in her opinion, I was needing her and she stuck to me like freaking glue. And, you know, I didn't see it even then. I was like, well, maybe I do need her. And I was scared and I was alone and I didn't have friends and all that kind of stuff. I just had my husband and my kids and my mom. And we were really close. Well, some time passed and my father actually passed away without me rebuilding that relationship, without me changing, you know, my opinions about him in that moment. I never got to make amends, you could say, with my dad. And he passed away that Thanksgiving year um, I was 21 
and he passed away and a few months later I had had a dream on Thanksgiving and back then I was doing dream interpretation and helping people do dream interpretation and doing a whole bunch of study around that and I remember writing this dream down where I had a dream with my dad and I made peace with him that Thanksgiving in that dream with him and you know we had a really great conversation in the dream and I felt clear and I started thinking about my father the next morning and I just went I have to find my dad I have to reach out to him he needs to see his grandbabies I want to build that relationship it took me a few months to figure out what had happened but I found out that he passed away and I had a moment where I went I fucked up I fucked up I let somebody else's thoughts and opinions destroy my relationship for years with my father. I lost years being his daughter. I lost years to anger and lack of forgiveness. I lost years to my own blindness, my own criticisms that were built on lies. I lost all of that in this physical realm I could not go back. I could not change what I had done. And that was such a tremendous lesson to me. Now, granted, I felt like I was at peace with my dad and I have felt at peace. I I never even cried over his death because I felt at peace. I felt like God had given me that opportunity. I didn't know it was an opportunity when that dream, but I've cherished that dream for the last 23 years of my life. And I'll cherish it for the rest of my life because I know that 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 was my soul making amends. That was my soul coming to peace with his. And I haven't had a dream about my dad since. And it's all been good. And I feel very good there. But you know, over the course of time, I've had many, many relationships. Relationship with my mom, relationship with siblings, relationship with friends, relationship with children relationship with clients. I've been told by people that know me, people that think that they know me, people who want to know me, people who don't have a fucking clue who I am, who I should be, what I should be, how I should handle life, the decisions that I should make, how it would make them so much happier, and how it is my responsibility to make them happy. And oh, they're not judging me, and they have no opinions, And they have no concerns. And no, you go do you and you be happy and all that. But don't do it that way. Don't do it that way. And I want you to think about the relationships that you have. And where are you guilty of claiming that you're not judging people? Claiming that you're not making opinions? Claiming that, oh, you're just going to let them be. They're your kids. They're your sister, your brother, your bestie. That's your mom, your dad. It's whoever. That's their life. I'm happy for them. If they're happy, if they're happy, I'm happy for them. It's none of my business. We say those things, but we don't act out those things. We tend to really drive home our desires for other people to do what we want them to do so that we feel safe, so that we benefit from the situation in some way and sometimes it is just that we just don't like the looks of something like the picture on the wall and it's something so small like that well I just really don't like that picture on your wall and I know that if I say it that's going to cause just a little ripple in your life and well that might eat away at you and you might take down that picture and I don't have to look at the picture on the wall now I know I don't live in your house and I know that I'm only here once every two weeks And it really doesn't matter to my world. And it's your picture and it's your wall and it's your memory. But I just don't like that picture on your wall. We do things like that. And we don't realize that sometimes those little statements, those things that we don't count as criticisms and judgments, that they eat away at others. They shift and alter other people's lives And it can be something small that can change mountains for somebody. We have far more power than what we realize. And here's the thing. It is decision time. As we come to the end of 2020, it's decision time. 
The end of every year is decision time for so many people. Every single day of our life is decision time. But we tend to wake up to it just a little bit more in December. And as we come into January of the new year, we have been trained to pay attention to what do I want? What are my intentions, my goals, my desires for the next 12 months of my life? So we start to goal set. We start to put out ideas. We start to look at what our lives are like and where we're not happy. And we start to go, I'm not happy here. I'm not happy here. I'm not happy here. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make a change. And we lay down that commitment, don't we? We lay it down and we go, yes, I'm going to do this. 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 Man, I'm really going to hit it hard as soon as the holidays are over. Man, I'm really going to live for me this next year. Man, I'm really going to do whatever it is that you want to do. But here's the thing. Other people, they'll tell you, I love you. You're so much to me. You mean the world to me. I love how you're doing this. I love you. You're so cool. You're so blah, blah, blah. And when you make that commitment to you, the one thing I know across the board that happens when we commit to change, to growth, to living the life that we feel called to live is that this amazing, beautiful, magnificent life that we have, this world and all the beautiful people in it and all those lovely people that love us so much and have our best interest at heart are going to get a little funky. They're going to get a little funky because change is difficult and growth is difficult and nobody likes that transformation period. It is a resettling of the ground. And we are in the midst of transformation. And when we are going through transformation, whether it feels positive or negative, which it hardly ever feels positive because there is always the pushing pains of transformation. But when we are going through a transition period, whether it is that new job, a new relationship, a new house, you know, a new diet plan, a, a goals, and we're speaking out our goals, it is one of those things that for some reason, People will come after us and they without, without intent, not because they want to destroy necessarily, but because it makes them uncomfortable and they just don't even understand it because the majority of people are not conscious enough to understand that, oh, my best friend, she, he is making some changes there and that's, that's going to change that's going to alter our relationship a little bit and they're making different decisions they're choosing them they're choosing themselves over our relationship they're choosing themselves their happiness their future their goals their desires they're choosing that over this but how can they do that that's so selfish of them that's so not okay of them right that's what we think. We don't really realize that we're thinking that. We go, oh no, I want the best for you. I want the best for you. But what we don't realize is that we say that we want the best, but is that true? Because what if their best means that our relationship has to change? What if it means that they need to go and do something for themselves that doesn't involve us at the level that we used to be involved? And the reality is, is that nothing stays the same forever. The one constant in our life is change. That is the one and only thing that we have a hundred percent guaranteed to us. Change is always occurring. We are always evolving. We are always transforming. We are always moving. And in that transition period, in that transformation period, what we have to do is learn how to adjust. We have to adjust ourselves. We have to adjust our course. We have to watch ourselves. We have to check in. We have to pause and we have to consistently ask ourselves, is this coming from a place of love? 
or fear? Is it coming from a place of love or fear? Because if that other person means anything to us and they are making a decision for themselves, whether I am in favor of it or not, whether I like the picture on the wall or not, it's not my wall. It's not my life. And I don't have to agree and I don't need them to show up any way for me to love them. I know that with my kids, my kids do things all the time. They push me left and right and they have been some of the greatest teachers in my life. Motherhood has been amazing, amazing for a teacher for me. And they have taught me that I don't need my children to show up any particular way for me to unconditionally love them. They can make their choices. I don't have to agree with them. They can be with people that I love or that I, nah, not that fond of that one. They can move to different states, buy houses and cars, drive too fast, take too long in school, get bad grades, do drugs, have too many sexual partners, be prudes, make career choices that I'm like, hey, you really want to do that for the rest of your life? They make spiritual decisions that I'm not okay with. Political decisions that I'm like, eh, really? Did you really look at all the facts? But at the end of the day, I love them. And I want the best for them. And I want them to make the decisions that they want to make for their lives. And if that means that I have to shut up and bite back my ego and my opinions so that I don't alter their picture on the wall because it's their picture and if they want to hang it, then they should hang it. Then that's what I'm going to do. And my message to you today is, it is decision time. It's always about you. But that means that those decisions need to be your decisions about your life. It's not the decisions about other people's lives. That's not about you. There's your business, there's God's business, and there's other people's business. There's only one of those that you have any control over and that you need to stick your nose in. I hope you can figure out which one that is. Okay, on that note, I don't really have any announcements to make. There's not a whole lot going on. It's a beautiful day, a lot just beauty out. I encourage you to take a moment to ask yourself, where am I sticking my nose? I shouldn't stick my nose. How am I being opinionated where I don't need to be opinionated? How am I showing up in any freaking relationship out there? And is it really coming from a state of love or am I trying to control the people in my life that I am telling that I'm not trying to control? And what can I do for me, my life, my happiness, my goals, my desires moving forward? Because that is the only fucking thing that any of us needs to do. Let's stay the fuck out of everybody else's shit. Okay. Go back to nice and sweet. Sweet kennel, yes. I you know. I feel like I kind of did like a little ass kickery and yet not. I hope I was loving and from the heart and at the same time. Receive me however you will. It is what it is. I love you guys. Remember, you are worthy. You're worthy of an amazing life. You're worthy of the lover in your bed. You're worthy of the, worthy of the money in the bank. You're worthy of the career that you want, the body that you want, the house, the car, the travel, the connections, the love, it all. And all you have to do is show up as you and give a shit about you and make the decisions for you that make you happy. Tend to your own garden. That's what you need to do to receive that life. As always. Stop existing. Start living. You can follow me at www.kendallwilliams.com. Of course, on here, on YouTube, on Instagram, all over the place. I love you guys. I'll catch you tomorrow with another Conscious Coffee.